Hey, welcome to today's video on Profilmark. Today we're going to run through an actual example to see how the RSA algorithm actually works. In this example, we're going to list out all of the pieces of the algorithm um, and we'll see how sending a message involves this encryption and then the decryption process. We'll see the entire process throughout. Okay, so one of the things the algorithm required was um, a number n that's a product of two very large primes. So we're gonna pick primes that are reasonably sized just for the illustration purposes. I'm gonna pick 47 and 59. Um, so the product is this n right over here. Okay, so one of the things we're gonna need in the algorithm is 5n. And we talked about in the previous video that 5n is p minus one times q minus one which in this case then is going to be 46 times 58, right? And we're going to use this number quite a bit throughout the algorithm so that we know um, what we need to do for our modular calculations. So this number turns out to be 2,668. And as usual, any message is going to use the cipher um, where any letter corresponds to its uh, position in the alphabet. Okay, so let's jump in and actually try this out. So our goal is going to be for Alice to send a message go to Bob. So here is Bob and here's Alice. The first thing we need to do is take this message that Alice has and change it to something secretive that we send over the public channel to Bob. That requires some pre-processing by Bob, um, and we're gonna see exactly how that's gonna work. Okay, so the first part is that Bob needs to pick an integer e that satisfies this condition right over here. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? So we saw a little bit earlier that Bob knows that 5n is 2668. So what Bob can do is pick random values for E and test things out. So let's say Bob picks E randomly to be 17. Um, will this work? Well, we can test using the Euclidean algorithm. So run the Euclidean algorithm on the pair of numbers 17 and 2668. We're not gonna illustrate running that process here, but if you wanna see how that process works, check out this video right over here where we talk about the details. Okay, so if you do that, you can actually figure out um, a way to write one as a linear combination of these two numbers with integer coefficients. And it turns out that 17 times 157 uh, plus 200, the 2,668 times negative one is one. So I want to emphasize again, this number here is E, and this number here is 5n. Okay, so we have E times some number is one plus a multiple of 5n. That's great. Okay, so our public key then is going to be 17. Okay, and that's what we're going to send publicly to the entire channel. Okay, so now what we need to do is publicly announce this, that's fine. So Alice has um, this pair, publicly announce that n is the number that it is, which is 2773. So you can imagine, if you didn't have a calculator, 2773 is a hard number to know as prime factors of. And in general, if this number was really massive, computers can't even do a good job of figuring out that and then e is 17 is going to be publicly announced as well okay so this is stuff people need to do um, work so now alice is going to do some work she's going to take her message and encrypt it so the message was go g is the seventh letter of the alphabet o is the 15th so M, the message that Alice wants to send, is 715. And in according to our uh, instructions, we want to compute 7 
15 to the e mod n. So we need to know an integer c with c being between 1 and n so that c is congruent to m to the e, which is 17, modulo n, 2773. Okay, so I want to emphasize this thing here is our message m, this is our encryption key e, and this is m. Okay, so this takes some work, and there are a lot of different things that we can do. We can start raising 715 to small powers, like 2, and then take that result and square it to get 17 to the 715 to the 4, et cetera, et cetera, um, and lots of other techniques. If the number E was like quite large, we have other techniques that we can use as well that we've learned in previous videos. Okay, so if you do this process, I'll mention what the result is. The result is that C is going to equal 1462. Cool. Okay. So this is the thing that Bob is going to receive. So here's Bob, Alice, and the message that Bob is going to receive is this encrypted number C right over here. OK, so that's the end of the encryption process. This is all work that Alice does. In number three, given all the public information. So if we think about this overall, what's happening is Bob announces n and e. n is a bound on the length of the numbers that Bob is allowing to receive. And then e is a special encryption key that he's sending publicly for people to send messages with. And so Alice's job is to take her message that she wants to send and encrypt using this process. Okay, so now that Bob receives this, what he really wants is the original message. If Bob tried to use the cipher to figure out what 1462 was, he'd be like, okay, what's the 14th letter of the alphabet? Maybe it's N. And then the 62nd letter? Question mark. Not clear. So anybody who tries to intercept and figure this out will have no luck. Um, all right, that's okay though, because Bob has a process. So Bob receives the C, which is 1462. And then he has to do some work. The first piece of work that Bob needs to do is compute an integer d so that 1 is between d and this phi of n, which we computed to be 2668, right, with the condition that ed, so that 17d, is congruent to 1 mod 2668. Now, luckily, Bob actually did this work already. If we go back here, Bob computed this interesting integer combination using the Euclidean algorithm. Okay, so one of the things that's convenient about this it is that it actually addresses this question as well. If we look at this integer combination, it tells us that 17 times this number is 1 plus a multiple of 2668. So he's already done this work actually. d equals to 157 works as a number that we can use. This is convenient. So Bob doesn't have to do a lot of extra work. The work was already done earlier. OK, so then now what Bob needs to do is compute n which is a number between 1 and 2773, the number n that we started with, um, so that n is congruent to c, which is 1462, to the d, 157, modulo 2773. And again, this thing here is c, this is d. And this was n. Now I'm going to leave it to you to actually try to do this computation, but if you do it, and I actually think you should 
actually do it. Take 1462, raise it to the 157, compute mod 2773. You can take it step by step by taking 416, 1462 and multiplying, uh, uh, squaring it, um, squaring that, squaring that, etc., multiplying by different things and seeing what you get. For example, um, you could write uh, 14. So that's like one way of doing it if you um, write 1462 with powers. There's also something that you can do to make things a little bit easier, which is actually really good in practice. Bob is the one who's doing this, and Bob knows that this number is 47 times 59. So what Bob can do instead is figure out what 1462 raised to the 157 is when reduced modulo 47, and also what it is when reduced modulo 59. And why that helps is this is a number x, right? And then you'd have two numbers filled in here for what x is mod 47 and what x is mod 49. This will imply that x is a unique particular number modulo 47 times 59 that you can actually compute um, using the theorem that we talked about in a previous video, right over here on solving systems of linear Diophantine equations like this. And the advantage of doing that is that you're working with smaller numbers instead of working with this very large 2773. Okay, and if you actually do this process, which I highly recommend you do, you end up with n being 715, which is exactly the message go. So a really cool process in going about employing the RSA encryption algorithm with a concrete example, and I suggest you try this and fill in a lot of the modular details so you actually get a feel for what it's like to run this algorithm. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, definitely click the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, definitely subscribe to the channel.